In previous videos, we've talked about SN1 reactions, and we've also talked about rearrangement reactions. And in this video, we're going to talk about SN1 reactions that occur with rearrangement, giving one example of this reaction. So knowing what you know about SN1 and the rearrangement reactions, see if you can apply those concepts together to see what the product of this reaction would be. So taking this alcohol, HCl, and try figuring out what the product of this reaction might be. If you need to, press pause, work on it yourself, and then when you're ready, press play, and we'll go through it. Okay, so let's have a look at this reaction, and I think it's always good to do a few little automatic things before talking about the mechanism of a reaction because it can help to keep track of, of where everything is. And one of those automatic things is to number the carbons you're dealing with, and it doesn't have to be perfect IUPAC numbering. It can just be keeping track of things numbering. And drawing in the implicit or hidden hydrogens is also very helpful because it helps you remember where the hydrogens are, which is easy to lose track of. Remember, each carbon is going to have a full octet here. And then you also might want to draw in the implicit or hidden lone pairs on each atom. And oxygen's going to have two, and chlorine's going to have three. So that also tells you, helps to tell you where this reaction might occur. And then finally, the last piece of information, which is, which is good to have, are the partial charges. If you remember the electronegativities of hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen's about 2.2, oxygen 3.4, chlorine's about 3.2. So if we compare the oxygen-hydrogen bond, this oxygen is more, oxygen's more electronegative than hydrogen. So it's going to draw electron density towards it. It's going to become partially negative. And the hydrogen is going to have electron density taken away from it, so it's going to be partially positive. And that's also the case in HCl. H is going to be partially positive, and chlorine being more electronegative is going to be delta minus. Remember then in all reactions that we're always going to go from electron rich to electron poor. So we're going to start with our most electron rich component, and it's going to donate electrons to our most electron poor. And of course, opposites attract. So our most nucleophilic atom here is the oxygen and we're going to take an, an, a pair of electrons from our negatively charged or partially negatively charged oxygen and it's going to be drawn towards this partially positive hydrogen so negative going to positive and that's going to break our hydrogen to chlorine bond so in other words HCl is acting like an acid we're going to donate a proton to our oxygen so let's draw out what this product might be we've got step one so step one would be protonation of this alcohol and we're going to have O and this is going to form a bond to uh, we have H and maybe we'll use blue to show this new bond here OH and we've got lone pairs one lone pair now on oxygen went from two to one there's going to be now a positive charge on the oxygen so it went from sharing a pair of electrons with hydrogen to now from only its own pair of electrons, sorry, to sharing a pair of electrons with hydrogen. And the chlorine is going to have a new pair of electrons on it, which it didn't before. It had three to itself and it was sharing a pair with hydrogen. Now it's going to have four to itself. So it's gained an electron. So that's going to give it a negative charge. Now remember what the first step in the SN1 reaction is we are going to have the leaving group leave. Now this wasn't very possible in this first step because our leaving group would have been OH minus. And OH minus is a strong base. And that's a bad leaving group. Instead, here, now that we've protonated our OH, we would have H2O as our leaving group, which is a weak base. And this is actually going to be a great leaving group. So our leaving group is going to leave, and that's what's going to happen here. Leaving group leaves, and we can then get this new product. And let's draw it all out here. And I skipped drawing the numbering and implicit hydrogens, but we can redraw it here with our carbocation. We've got hydrogen here and a hydrogen here, and CH3. CH3, CH3, and 
This is going to give us oxygen, and we'll draw two hydrogens on it. Two lone pairs, so it's neutral. We've lost oxygen. And actually, let's give one of these lone pairs, make it blue, to show that this lone pair came from breaking the carbon-oxygen bond and forming a lone pair on oxygen. What that's going to mean is this, hydro this carbon is going to go from being neutral, because it was neutral with the hydrogen here, to now it's going to become positive. So it's a, now it's a carbocation. And we can't forget to also draw in our Cl minus. So our Cl minus is floating around here. OK. Now, we formed a carbocation. Now, the key question to ask when you form a carbocation in these types of reactions is, what type of carbocation is it? Is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? And remember the order of carbocation stability. Tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary. So here we're dealing with a carbocation which is attached to two carbons. So we'll do the numbering again. One, two, three, four, and five. So this is carbon two here is attached to two carbons, which makes it a secondary carbocation. And the next question to ask yourself is about the neighbors. The reason why we need to ask ourselves about the neighbors is to ask about whether or not a rearrangement can take place. So the neighbors of carbon two are carbon one. And you notice carbon one has three hydrogens. Carbon one is primary. So is a rearrangement going to occur with a primary carbon? Well, that would give us a primary carbocation, which is considerably less stable than a secondary carbocation. So we're going to have no, no rearrangement, no rearrangement, because that would give us, we'd have a loss of hydrogen here. This would give us a primary carbocation. Now, on the other hand, if we look over a little bit, maybe we just move stuff over a wee bit. This is a tertiary carbon. Now, a tertiary carbon, because it's attached to three carbons, we could migrate a CH3 or a hydrogen. But remember that hydrogen is preferred pref. If I can spell preferred correctly, that would be good. Hydrogen is preferred for, for migrations over CH3. So we're only going to consider the migration of the hydrogen. And if we migrated this hydrogen or hydride, because we're going to take the pair of electrons, this would actually give us a tertiary carbocation. And tertiary is more stable than secondary. So this would be allowed. And in other words, there is a driving force for this rearrangement. So let's draw this rearrangement out and let's see what, it would, ha what would happen here. So we're going to take a pair of electrons between the carbon and the hydrogen. And the tail is going to be between in the CH bond, and it's going to migrate over to carbon 2. It's going to migrate over to carbon 2. And what's this going to look like? Well, let's redraw everything. So we have our hydrogen here, CH3. We have a CH3, another CH3. And then we have our new hydrogen here. And we've got a new pair of electrons between the carbon and the hydrogen. And the bond is here. This pair of electrons I'm showing is being uh, bonding the carbon and the hydrogen. Maybe we can number everything too. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, what's going to happen to carbon three? Well, this arrow is telling us to break the carbon hydrogen bond and form the carbon hydrogen bond on carbon two. Now this carbon is going to go from sharing a pair of electrons between carbon and hydrogen to lacking uh, that pair of electrons. And, so, and since it, it had one, sh one electron to itself from these two, it's actually going to be losing an electron. And this makes it positively charged. And if you'll note, this is now a tertiary, tertiary carbocation. This is a tertiary carbocation, which we said was more stable, right? More stable than secondary.
Now, we also have the Cl minus ion floating around, and I should have made more space for it, but here it is. This is always going to balance out our, our positive charge. We're always going to balance our charges out. And now that we have this positive charge present, this pair of electrons from the chlorine can then attack our carbocation. And this would give this product. Because the carbocation has an empty uh, orbital, and that orbital can be attacked. It only has six electrons, remember. And therefore, that empty orbital, that empty p orbital, can be attacked by a nucleophile. So carbocations are very good electrophiles. And that would give us this product where we now have a chlorine here. And let's draw this bond in blue. We have a new bond in blue between carbon and chlorine. And now we see that, that we have quenched our carbocation. The carbocation has gone from lacking any electron, uh, lacking, uh, having an empty orbital here, and now it's sharing a pair of electrons with chlorine. Uh, so that would give it a total of eight. So it's now neutral. And this is a tertiary alkyl chloride. So this is our SN1 reaction with rearrangement. You can see the steps in this reaction. We, we protonate our oxygen, which is not a good leaving group. But now, because we form water, it's a great leaving group. It's a great leaving group. The leaving group then leaves. So uh, let me just write this out. So step one is protonation. Step one. And then step two is, is loss of leaving group, so LG. And then step three, oh, we're running out of space here, aren't we? Step three is, is rearrangement. Step three is rearrangement. And then step four is attack. Step four is attack. So we're attacking our, our carbocation with the chloride ion. And that gives you the product of substitution reaction. So we're, we're breaking a carbon oxygen bond, we're forming a carbon chlorine bond, but we're also moving a hydrogen around. So we're breaking a carbon hydrogen bond, uh, we're breaking this carbon hydrogen bond on carbon three, and we're forming a new carbon hydrogen bond on carbon two. And so that is, how an SN1 reaction with a rearrangement can occur, specifically an example of a hydride shift. Hydride shift. So in the next video, we're going to do an SN1 reaction, but it's going to occur with an alkyl shift. So we'll see how that reaction works uh, next time.